We now want to have closing statements of two minutes each from each of our panelists, beginning with artist Chuck Close arguing against the motion. Um, it was uh, not me, but Dave Hickey, who said works of art have no intrinsic value. All their value is extrinsic. It is invested from without and over a period of time. And that is the truth. It's not uh, what any, the reason it can't be regulated is it's a kind of consensus, a consensus that's formed between art critics and art, um, art dealers and, and art historians and, and uh, artists themselves. Uh, you can hype something for a while, you can, you can spin it, you can try and produce, uh, um, you can try and put it up for auction and, and uh, manipulate it that way. But finally, it is, the art world is not hog futures. When you lose money in the stock market, as I just did, I'm not going to hang my uh, stock certificates on the wall. If I bought something I like and no one else in the world thinks it's worth anything anymore, I at least have something I like. And that is what makes it different from other kinds of investments. You can't just look at it as hog futures or, or pork bellies or anything else. It is ruled by passion, and it is a consensus that's formed amongst art world professionals of all kinds, and most important, by artists themselves. And you can, you can manipulate it up to a point what Good is trying to regulate it when it is a self-correcting process. Uh, when the hype and everything else falls away, you'll be looking at the, uh, the, the, the work, and if there is not support for that work, if, if, if the professionals in the field, those people who know it and care about it, whether they're in the auction houses, whether they're dealers, whether they're critics uh, or collectors or artists, that consensus is what forms value, and nothing else matters. Thank you, Chuck Lewis. <laughs> Making his summary statement for the motion, the art market is less ethical than the stock market, Richard Feigen, an art dealer and collector, founder of Richard L. Feigen and Company. I don't quarrel with anything that Chuck says, except I do not believe that it addresses the point of this debate. I believe that nothing else has much va intrinsic value than art. I don't believe in anything else. I don't believe in green pieces of paper that they print in Washington ad infinitum to the trillions of dollars. I believe in art. However, there is an art market. This was created by the press publicizing these huge prices and by the financial institutions who are lending money on it, who have set up departments to advise their clients on buying art it has become, it has been transformed, metastasized into a financial market. And because it is a financial market, for better or for worse, although I would prefer that it were not, because I am passionate about buying art, I'd rather buy it, and this makes it more difficult for me and more expensive for me. The fact is that it is a financial market. And as such, it is totally unregulated. And in my view, things go on in this market that could not happen in the securities markets. People would go to jail. Okay, you can't pretend that there's a buyer when there isn't. There's no transparency at all. And what I'm saying is, I'm not saying to regulate the prices of art because that is between the artist and his dealer, as Chuck says. But the fact is, nobody is saying, nobody is saying something that's not true. I'm saying that in the auction market, and I agree that auctions are indispensable to establish values and for people that want to go in and acquire art. In that market, there is no transparency, and there is deception, deliberate deception, and I do believe that it ought to be regulated, that this kind of activity. Now, I um, uh, wish all of you to vote <laughs> for what our position here. <laughs> Thank you, Richard Feigen. Summarizing against the motion, Amy Capalazzo, Deputy Chairman and International Co-Head of Post-War and Contemporary Art at Christie's. So it's very important to address Richard directly here in his um, clear, clear dislike of the auction houses. 
Richard, if it weren't for the auction houses bringing uh, liquidity and transparency, what you would do all day would be a mere curiosity. So the market depends on the liquidity and, liquidity and transparency that the auction houses bring. And r remember that the area of the market you're calling the most unethical or potentially corrupt is the only area that's regulated, in fact. So positively, um, I, I make the proposition that this is way too specific an argument, that au auction is an ancient art form and a completely legitimate way to um, sell something in the world. And there's a sort of ancient rhythm and dance to auction that people seem to accept and understand. Uh, and there's many ways for consumers to become informed. To go back to the proposition, I think uh, my hypothesis is anybody who signs up for the art world, signs up to participate by a certain set of values and ideas about how we look after and take care of the art. I mean, some of us are compensated well, but no one's in it for the dough. There is definitely another motive to be involved. And art exists with this larger art world that is the kind of moral and ethical conscience of what the market does. If you don't have street cred in Seoul, you ain't going to go very far in the art market. So I argue the proposition that, in fact, the art world um, is at least as ethical as the stock market, if not vastly more so, that individual people are unethical in their behavior, and we all know them in every single industry. And the system of the art world, in fact, stands to be potentially more ethical because there are all sorts of various motives to be involved, but primarily it's for the, for the love of the art itself. Thank you, Amy Cabalazzo. <laughs> Summarizing for the motion, Michael Hugh Williams, founder of the Albion Gallery. I wanted to remind you uh, the idea that regulations are what force ethics, and in an un unregulated market like the art market, it is hard to force people to adhere to ethical principles. Uh, without ethical princi principles, however, and with the manipulations of market, uh, we can look, for instance, to the tulip market in 1636. <laughs> we create bubbles, and these bubbles are intrinsically unhealthy. Um, you may all know Charles Mackay's extraordinary book, Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. People follow each other because they feel that there, I there are financial opportunities especially when these markets are unregulated. The tulip market crashed, but it was regulated by the Dutch government rather too late. But the point here is that the art market is unregulated. It is in, open to unethical behavior because it's un, un, unregulated. Not how often is it unregulated, but the fact that it, it is intrinsically unethical because it is, as I said before, it is not regulated, it is not transparent, and there are, most importantly, absolutely no barriers to entry so that anybody may come in and manipulate the market, whether we like them or dislike them, whether we admire them or not, is absolutely irrelevant. The important point here is to remember that the market is intrinsically open to manipulation and intrinsically unethical. Whether it's actually happening or not is not important to the debate tonight. What is important is to understand that the market is intrinsically unethical. Thank you, Michael Hugh Williams. <laughs>